I need to make an apology because I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry on behalf of my generation because we have failed you. We have not been able to provide you enough skills and knowledge so you can seize the times in which you are living. I know you have been following the media. You are aware how technology is disrupting modern world of business, even society. Are you ready? Are you ready for that? Everybody keeps using the same examples, like, for example, Airbnb, Uber, Tesla, because they're really flashy and shiny, and you can learn so much from them. For example, do you know that most of the founders of companies like those are, in fact, people with technology background? Or you don't mind, you don't care, because you are preparing yourself for your first job. Nice. But most of the preferable employers nowadays are, in fact, IT companies, not only globally, but here locally as well. You have so many successful IT companies here in Croatia. You can stay with your family and friends, enjoy this lovely country, enjoy our lifestyle, and work on international project. Or you think you will work for something more traditional, for example, for one of the retailers, or banking, or maybe for a press. But guess what? Even they seek new clients and new markets online through digital channels. Well, but luckily for you, technology students, you must be thinking now. What is she talking about? Of course I'm ready. I have been preparing from my childhood. I'm very passionate about technology and IT. And I keep learning. I keep solving problems. I really like that. I'm passionate. Good for you. But what about your friends and your peers? And most important, what about your future colleagues? Are they ready? I know, all of you are able to use devices. You take a device, a gadget, and you can use whatever there is, any kind of application, any kind of service. So you are great consumers. You're consuming modern world. Is that enough? Or you want to contribute? You want to solve problems in your fields. But how will you solve a problem if you don't know if an idea is a doable or not? How can you know if one idea is sustainable if you don't have any computational thinking skills, meaning if you don't understand how technology really works? You don't need to have technology, in-depth technology knowledge to know how it works, but you need to understand to the certain level. So I already said I'm sorry. I am. But I'm sometimes even angry because we have we had so many different opportunities to change your formal education, to change creation formal education system, and we have not been able to do it. But then again, I'm really hopeful. I am. It has never, never really been less important where you've been born, how you've been raised. Okay, it can help slightly if your family owns oil, owns oil field in its backyard, a little bit. But it's much more important if your family gave you a lot of love, understanding, and support. Because everything you need is in your head and in your willpower. And you need a lot of willpower. Because you need to start learning now. You need to start investing in your own skills, like problem solving, creative thinking, and lifelong learning. You can still keep the pace, but you need to start learning now. You can take online classes, you can ask your friends to help you, you can take some formal education, but you need to start doing it. So all those technology trends are going to be obsolete in a couple of months, maybe a year. Even I will learn something new. So whenever you start, it is not too late. We talk a lot about robotics. We even have STEMI robot here today with us. We have robots in our houses, small robot vacuuming our floor. Then we talk about 3D printing. We will have this session in afternoon. And we have Internet of Things. We used to have only sensors. Sensors were capable to get some data and to send that data somewhere. 
Today, we have devices which are so clever, so smart, so light, and so cheap that they are, and they are able to make decisions on the spot. And decisions are so important today. All of you technology students, you must be thinking that life is going to be easy for you. But sorry, you need to decomplex everything we've been able to complicate. And believe me, we overcomplicated so many things. It is so hard to integrate with some systems today. Have you heard about fintech? Investors are really crazy to give money to anybody who wants to develop financial service on top of the technology. But it's very hard because you need to dig very deeply to the banking or financial uh, agency systems, and it's not easy. It is almost like, imagine yourself driving to work and you run out of the gas. And in order to get some gas, you need to have a huge cistern and a small canister and some tubes, and you need to figure out how to get that fuel from one place to another. And it's almost hard, a little bit harder. It is sometimes like you need to have your own lab back at home. <laughs> I would really then give up driving the car. <laughs> I would run to, to the work if in that case. So uh, we have then my favorite concept, data science. If I need to choose just one technology trend, that would be data science, because we have finally merged mathematical knowledge, mathematical algorithms, and IT achievements, like big data, for example. So not that we are only able to manage vast, huge volumes of data, but we are able to make systems who are able to learn. Imagine that, system who can learn from its own mistakes, from its own decisions. So for example, if we collect all the different data about all cancer patients in the world, we are able to put that in one box, huge one. And we are able to build system who will be able to decide which therapy is the best one for particular patient. I think this is really life-changing for <laughs> many of us. And there are already systems like that in some geographies, in some clinics. And while, while we wait for those systems to collect really everything, let's just focus a little bit on teams who solve problems like this. So we have in one room, we have doctor, we have pharma specialist, we have mathematician, and we have IT people. It sounds almost like a joke, but it's not. And we always hope that they will understand each other. I think hoping is not enough. We tried to build applications like that for many years, and we failed many times. So we now decided that we want to invest time and money and energy into business knowledge on IT side. So for example, if we want to solve a banking problem, then IT analysts learn a lot about banking. But we forgot to invest time to learn something people from, from business. They're not learning computational thinking. I cannot understand why. But we are starting to change that. And we are starting with kids, as usual. It's always easiest with kids, because they are already great problem solver solvers. They keep solving problems every day. They're very creative, especially when it comes to asking their parents something. And they really learn, like, every day. So they already have those so important skills. And we just need to provide them a lot of self-esteem. So one day, they will be able to understand everything, and they will be able to choose what they want. And they will be able to talk with all different g people that we mentioned on equal level, because they will understand. And you must be thinking now, why do you care about kids? We forgot about you, I said I'm sorry, and now you should care if kids are learning coding. You should because I don't want you in my shoes in a couple of years. I don't want you to apologize to them. I want you to focus on yourself. You will have so many things you will need to solve. So we will try to fix this for you. And what's going to happen if we fix all those problems, if we fix everything? We will have a nation of well-educated, skillful people, 
And what then? There is a proverb saying, before enlightenment, I chopped wood and carried water. After enlightenment, I chopped wood and carried water. Meaning that whatever and whenever happens, we will all continue to search for our own inner peace, our own sense of fulfillment. And this is why work-life balance is so important. We tend to live in places where we can find a meaningful job, sense of fulfillment, but where we like living, where we really love living. So I live here. I like living here. I really love Croatia. I think we are blessed. We have so beautiful nature, so nice people. So imagine yourself working in the morning on a data science project and in, in the afternoon having a coffee with your friends or cycling around the city or even driving to the coast. I think this is so attractive that we can even attract some people from international, from other, not markets, but from other countries. They can come and live here. They can work with us. But we cannot do any of this if you leave. We cannot open new job positions if you leave. We cannot run successful companies if you leave. So we need you to stay. Stay and learn. Stay and be creative. Stay and fix problems. And we will do everything to support you. So you can enjoy your work. You can enjoy your time. You can enjoy your life. Thank you.